the second lecture on recursion. Let's review what we had in the first lecture. We want to count the number of ways selecting end balls from red or blue balls. If there is no restriction, there are two power of n ways to select end balls. Next, we consider the situation with one restriction. Two adjacent balls must not be both red. This lecture adds another color. We now consider green, blue, and red balls. The restriction is the same. Two adjacent balls cannot be both red. How many ways can we select in balls? We can solve the problem by listing all solutions when n is 1 or 2. When n is 1, we need to select only one ball and there are three solutions, green, blue, or red. When n is 2, there are eight solutions. How do we solve the problem when n is larger than 2? We can consider the color of only the first ball. If the first ball is blue or green, then there is no restriction of the second ball. The second ball can be red, blue, or green. If the first ball is red, then the second ball can be green or blue, but not red. When n is large, instead of trying to solve the problem directly, we solve the problem by making it slightly smaller. We can solve this problem by further dividing it into three smaller problems. Let's define g of n as the number of ways to select n balls and the first ball must be green. b of n is the number of ways to select n balls and the first ball must be blue. R of n is the number of ways to select n balls and the first ball must be red. If the first ball is green or blue, there is no restriction of the second ball. Thus, the second ball can be green, blue, or red. After we select the first ball, we need to select n minus 1 balls. Thus, we can express g of n as the sum of g of n minus 1 r of n minus 1, and b of n minus 1. If the first ball is red, the second ball can be green or blue. Thus, r of n is the sum of g of n minus 1, and b of n minus 1. Since the first ball can be green or blue or red, f of n is the sum of g of n, b of n, and r of n. We can also write g of n as f of n minus 1 b of n is f of n minus 1. Obviously, g of 1 is 1. The reason is that there is only one way to select one ball and the first ball is green. So is b of 1 and r of 1. b of 1 is 1. r of 1 is 1. Based on these rules, we can write this table for different values of n. Let's add another restriction and discuss how we should modify the solution. The restriction is that two adjacent balls must not be both red nor both green. How should we modify the solution? We can use the same approach by defining g of n, b of n, and r of n. The only difference is that if the first ball is green, the second ball must be blue or red. Thus, g of n is the sum of b of n minus 1 and r of n minus 1. Please notice that g of n minus 1 is not used because it will make the first two balls both green. This table shows the number of ways to select balls for different values of n. The next problem is integer partition. This problem integrates multiple concepts related to recursion. We will study this problem in details over several lectures. First, let me explain the problem. The integer partition problem breaks a positive integer into the sum of one or several positive integers. If only one integer is used, it is the original integer itself. By allowing the original integer itself, this problem is slightly easier. Let's consider some examples. If we want to partition 1, there is only one possible way, 
using one itself because one is the smallest positive integer. If we want to partition two, there are two options. We can use either one plus one, or two itself. If we want to partition three, there are four ways. The first is one plus one plus one. The second is one plus two. The third is two plus one. The fourth is three itself. If we want to partition four, there are eight ways. The first four use one as the first value. There are two ways to partition four using two as the first value. One way to partition four using three as the first value. Finally, there's one way to partition four using four itself. The question is how many ways we can partition the number n? Some people may quickly jump to an answer by saying, the answer seems to be 2 of power n minus 1. If you ask these people, how do you get this answer? They will probably say, I observe the trend. Unfortunately, observation is not a scientifically valid way to solve problems. Let me give you an example and explain why you cannot rely on observations. Imagine that you visit West Lafayette during May and September. You see no snow for six months. Can you conclude that snow will not happen in West Lafayette? You cannot reach a conclusion simply by observing some examples. To explain why it is not valid to answer the question by observation, let's consider how the observation may work. We have a few pairs of values. When n is 1, there are 1 ways to partition. When n is 2, there are 2 ways to partition. When n is 3, there are 4 ways to partition. When n is 4, there are 8 ways to partition. For any number of pairs of values, we can always find an infinite number of polynomials with sufficient degrees passing these pairs. This is another explanation why we must not generalize observations because mathematically there are infinite possibilities. Let me explain how we can solve this problem rigorously. We want to partition the number n. Let's consider only the first number. It can be 1, or 2, or 3, all the way up to n. After the first number. The remaining number is n minus 1, n minus 2, down to 1, and 0. Let's define f of n as the number of ways to partition number n. If the first number is 1, the remaining number is n minus 1. There are f of n minus 1 ways to partition n minus 1. If the first number is 2, the remaining number is n minus 2. There are f of n minus 2 ways to partition n minus 2. If the first number is n minus 1, the remaining number is 1. There are f of 1 ways to partition 1. If the first number is n, there's nothing left. Since we allow the original number itself, this is counted as one way to partition. The first number can be 1, or 2, or 3 all the way to n minus 1. Thus, the number of ways to partition is the sum of f of n minus 1, f of n minus 2, f of n minus 3, to f of 1. The last case using n itself is counted as 1. We can find the close form of f of n. f of n is the sum of f of n minus 1, f of n minus 2, to f of 1, and 1 f of n plus 1 is the sum of f of n, f of n minus 1, f of n minus 2, to f of 1, and 1. If we subtract the first equalities from the second, the left side has f of n plus 1 minus f of n. The right side has f of n left. All the other terms are cancelled. Thus, f of n plus 1 is 2 times f of n. Since f of 1 is 1, we can obtain f of n is 2 power of n minus 1. Please notice that this conclusion is obtained by going through a rigorous mathematical process. 
we did simply guess from observations. Let's review the three components of recursion. The stop condition is when n is 1. f of 1 is 1. The recurring pattern is that f of n is the sum of f of n minus 1, f of n minus 2, to f of 1, and 1. The change is that f of n is expressed by using n minus 1, n minus 2, smaller and smaller.